Wild Space, The Final Frontier. These are the voyages of the Spelljammer Galleon, its five-year mission to explore strange new worlds, to seek out new life and civilizations, to boldly go where no halfling has gone before. But first, this video is sponsored by 1985 Games and their Kickstarter, The Deck of Stories. The Deck of Stories is a useful tool to help you create stories and adventures for your tabletop games. Each card is filled with an idea or story hook that can be weaved together with other cards. Pull some random cards from the deck and place them down, linking the story hooks to start crafting your own adventure. The Kickstarter has funded well over its goal, and 1985 Games are offering two story decks plus NPC cards to put pre-generated characters into your campaign. It's really fun art and a great way to build a one-shot or a full campaign. Check out their Kickstarter today using the link below, and thanks again, 1985 Games. Hello everybody, Jordan here, the PH is silent, and this video is a continuation of a Spelljammer video series. This particular video is part two. If you want to watch part one, it will help out with the overall idea of the D&D Spelljammer campaign setting, but hey, you're smart, you can figure it out. Who am I to tell you what to do? If you're curious, there is a link in the description and the top right corner of the screen. It'll take you to a Spelljammer playlist. In this video, I'm going to discuss the Spelljammer ships, their movement, ratings, and control. Or in other words, how do you pilot this thing? Spelljammer is a D&D fantasy space setting. It has unique fantasy rules involving gravity, air, and the nature of the universe. You can play any character race. Unique races are dependent on their homeworld being accessible, so if you're from the Forgotten Realms and want to play a dwarf, you can. Your dwarf would have all their Faerunian characteristics, just not space travel, that will come later. All races are allowed in Spelljammer, but if you wanted to be a race or class from a different setting, like Changeling or Shifter, you'd have to talk to your DM about incorporating the world of Eberron into your Spelljammer campaign. Starting a new Spelljammer game, there's always the fun question of, how did you get here? However, you could be native to spell jamming if you wish, a non Faerunian dwarf that flies the cosmos. You could also have some fun building unique backgrounds for the characters of Spelljammer. When Spelljammer came out, there was one race that was considered spaceborn, and that was the Lizardmen. They were considered savages on most worlds, and in space, they are strong and a frightening group to behold. Mentioned in my last video, clerics have some potential problems with recharging their spells. Their deity might not have influence in the crystal sphere where they are currently inhabiting. If you're native to Spelljammer, your cleric could follow one of the space civilization faiths, which would only cut you off momentarily while in the phlogiston. Those faiths are the polygots, the path and the way, uh, Ptah, the traveler's god, and various planner churches. You'll find followers and temples anywhere there are Spelljammer space civilizations. Now, astral projection, ethereal spells, portable holes, and extra dimensional spaces all work normally in wild space, but they do not work in the phlogiston. Phlogiston is cut off from the planes. It might truly be the plane between planes. It seemingly connects all the crystal spheres, but not the planes. You'll never find your way to limbo from the phlogiston. If you open a bag of holding in the phlogiston, it will just not function. It behaves as a normal bag, it, its contents empty. But don't worry, everything does return once you are back in wild space. Magical fire in wild space does work, but regular fire does not due to the lack of oxygen. Thus, you are able to cast a fireball or use produce flame, but if there is no air around you, the fireball will quickly disappear after doing damage, and it will not set other flammable things ablaze. Spelljammers are spaceships, but they are fueled by magic most of the time. The act of spell jamming is converting magical energy into motion for ships. In order for spell jammers to function, it requires a spell jammer helm, most often just called a helm. The helm looks like a great chair, a captain's chair almost. Any creature with spell slots can turn magical energy into movement for the ship. There are many different types of helms, as varied as the weapons and other equipment you could own. Helms can be upgraded, traded, or altered, and part of the fun of Spelljammer is upgrading your ship, outfitting it with new weapons or equipment to enhance speed, and a strong advantage would be to upgrade your helm, which would allow you more movement for less magical cost, valuable in space fights. A major helm converts magical ability to energy at a one per two level rate, fractions rounded up. This provides a ship rating known as SR, which 
stands for ship rating. SR equals your level divided by two rounded up. A first or second level wizard provides a ship rating of one, while a 20th level wizard provides a ship rating of 10. A minor helm converts magical ability to energy at a rate of one per three levels. So in this case, SR equals level divided by three rounded up. So a first level, second level, and third level wizard all equal an SR of one, but a 20th level wizard equals an SR of seven. Because your helm is the direct way you control your ship, many ships have minor helms as backups. If the major helm gets damaged or destroyed, you aren't adrift in wild space. Someone can hop on the minor helm to hopefully get you out of danger. Ships have their own stat block in Spelljammer, and rightfully so, as your Spelljammer ship will most often become a character in your game. The main stats are tonnage, ship rating, maneuverability class, hull points, power types, standard armament, cargo space, and armor rating. There's also keel length and beam length, which is the length and width of the ship measured at its longest and widest points. This is measured in feet and lets you know if your Spelljammer will be able to hide in that crater, which is 100% not a space lug. A ship's size is defined by tonnage, or T for short, but it's not weight, rather the amount of displacement the ship takes up. The tonnage is a reflection of how much air a ship surrounds itself with, the required crew capacity, and the max crew capacity. One ton is arbitrarily set to equal 100 cubic yards, so you can get an idea of how large your spell jammer is. Ships all have two numbers when it comes to crew. One is the minimum number of individuals needed to run the ship under normal circumstances, and the second is the max number of individuals the ship can carry without overloading its atmosphere bubble. This is shown as a fraction. So next to ships, you'll see 1035. 10 is the minimum crew, and any more than 35 people, you're gonna have air problems. Mentioned earlier, the ship rating, or SR, defines the ship's speed and power and a little bit of maneuverability. The higher the SR number, the faster the ship. An SR is directly affected by the level of a spellcaster piloting at the helm. So let's take two identical ships, but the wizards piloting them are at different level ranges. The higher level wizards spell jammer will be faster than the other. Maneuverability class, or MC, of your ship is pretty self-explanatory. How well can you tactically move through space? This is a factor of size, propulsion, and hull design. Some of the faster ships are graceful designs made by elves, and some of the slowest ships were sea vessels converted into spell jammers. The rating is A to F, with A being the most valuable, and F means the ship is below the base standards. Hull points, or HP, is the health of your ship. It's the number that represents the damage your ship has taken. Hull points are easy because they start out equal to your tonnage. A 30 ton ship has 30 HP. There are options for Spelljammer ships that add more armor or other materials that might increase your ship's HP but lower its maneuverability. Power type is the type of helm or engine, the force that propels your ship. For most, it's a spell jamming helm that converts magic into propulsion, but for mind flares, they have a special helm that lets them use psionic energy. And beholders power their ship with a mutated version of themselves called an orbis. Dwarves have a device called a forge, and you can have multiple power types on your ship, but they don't run at the same time. The online one is the primary power source, while any others you have would be considered backups. If you run out of fuel, you are adrift until you can get more, but luckily, spell slots return on a long rest. Cargo space is how much cargo you can carry, and each ton reflects 50 cubic yards of space that can be used, but only by non-living, non-breathing cargo. A 40-ton frigate could carry 20 tons of cargo. And finally, armor rating is the armor class of your ship. It operates just like armor class, so a dex-based D&D character might have a high AC because of how nimble they are and a paladin because of their armor. The same is true for ships and armor rating. A combination of construction and maneuverability make up armor rating. Small ships in general have a poor AR while heavy built large ships have a high AR. So with all of that, you're now ready to buy a Spelljammer. Well, the currency in Spelljammer is the galactic gold standard. If you have the coin, there are a lot of ships to choose from, and perhaps you'll start out small and trade up as you gain currency on your adventure. Or maybe you'll fall in love with your ship and augment it to increase its maneuverability or armor rating. Some of my favorite Spelljammer ships are the Squid Ship, the Neogi Death Spider, and the Mosquito. Subscribe for the next Spelljammer video. I'm gonna talk about helms a bit more, and I'll run you through ship-to-ship -ship combat. My goal is to show 
showcase a simple combat to put the rules into perspective. More questions to ask though, what about landing on planets? What adventures were written for Spelljammer? How easy is it to convert to 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons? Thanks for watching. Thank you so much to my patrons for keeping the lights on. Check out my channel for further Spelljammer videos. And again, thank you to 1985 Games and check out their Kickstarter using the link below. I'll see you guys all in the next video.